All right, the activity today is about physical changes. The first thing that we're going to do, though, is we're going to learn how to smell chemicals properly. So remove the cap from your bottle. Hold it out in front of you about six to eight inches. Get your Cub Scout sign out. And I'd like you to waft some of the chemical in here. Tell me what this chemical is made out of. What, is, what does this smell remind you of? Mia? Nail polish. Nail polish remover. Okay. Now, nail polish remover is 6 to 7% acetone. This is 100%. So it is really good stuff if you have fancy nails there, Henry. You keep in or Fred, I'm sorry, Fred. Keep in mind that it'll wreck your nails. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pour about a third of the bottle into your coffee cup. So go ahead and do that. Pour it directly in there. Don't pick it up out of the pan, though, though, Tabitha, because you'll see for a real, real quick why that's not a good idea. So when you do that, what, uh, Mia, what are you doing? Do I come to your house and mess up your stuff? What is the deal there? You're just supposed to pour it in the cup. You're not supposed to wreck the cup. Are you all right there? <laughs> okay, so what happens when we put the acetone into the styrofoam? Start yeah, it collapses. Okay, go ahead and squish that all the way down into the, into the acetone. Now, what you'll notice is that it'll keep coagulating. Now, styrofoam is about 90% air. And so when you add the acetone to the styrofoam, we're actually causing all of the structure to collapse. And you see those bubbles in there. That's because the air is being released. Go ahead and squish it together with your fingers. Go ahead and squish it. It's not going to hurt you, I promise. Go ahead and squish it together. Oh. And what that is, is that is pure styrene plastic. Go ahead and pick it up. And you can see you've gone from a solid that's got a, some consistency to a solid that is real wiggly and gloopy. Yeah. Now, you're tempted to suggest that this might be a chemical change because we go from a solid to a liquid. But all we're doing is dissolving the acetone in, or the styrofoam in the acetone. Now, go ahead and put that back in your tart pan. And what I'd like you to do is dip your finger into the acetone and rub it on the back of your hand and tell me if that feels hot or cold. Um, and it cold. is cold, yeah. Now, the reason for that is because you're actually participating in a change of state experiment. The acetone is a solid liquid or a gas. What is it, Jacob? Liquid. Liquid. Okay, Sid, when you put it on your hand, what happens to it? Does it stay a liquid or does it evaporate into a gas? So it goes from a liquid to a gas. In order for that to happen, Tabitha, that has to have energy. Where's that energy coming from? Mm. You, your body. Are you warm? Okay. Fred, do you produce heat? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Annika, the heat from your body is changing the liquid to a gas. Now, I want you to look at your fingers. Do you see sort of a whitish residue on there? Yes. Okay. Yes. That is fat. Acetone is a solvent, and what it does is it's absorbed by your skin, it dissolves the fat just under the layer of your skin, and then it redeposits it when it, it evaporates. So that's why we wear gloves when we work with chemicals, because when you're touching those chemicals, you're actually absorbing that chemical into your body. Although in this case, it's not going to hurt you, because acetone breaks down into water and carbon dioxide, which you'll have no problem with. Now, I'd like you to find the styrofoam peanut, put it in the acetone, and tell me what happens to it. Does it stay whole or does it dissolve? Oh, that was fast. It dissolves. It dissolves, okay. That was it crazy. It dies, yeah. It just disappears like crazy. Now I'd like you to take another styrofoam peggy peanut, put it in your mouth and suck on it and try to get it dissolved. Go ahead. Put it in your mouth, suck on it, suck, 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 suck. Mm, is it going anywhere? Now spit it out into your tart pan, okay? And it dissolves, doesn't it? Now take a cornstarch packing peanut. And put that in your acetone and, and, and roll it around. See if you can get it to dissolve. When you put the cornstarch in the acetone, does it go anywhere? No. no, it doesn't dissolve. Leave those in the tart pan. Take another cornstarch packing peanut, pop it in your mouth, chew it up, slurp it around, and Ew. tell me if it dissolves. Ew. That's a nice face, Annika. <laughs> Hensky, you're moved to your right there. There you go. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Is that, Tabitha, is that, is that better than home cooking? No? Okay, when you, when, you, when you put the cornstarch peanut in your mouth, can you get it to dissolve? No. No, okay. No? Sid, are you sure? Are you an alien? Put it in your mouth and suck on it. Come on, come on, slurp, chew, chew it up. Mmm, delicious. Mia, did, yours, did you get yours to dissolve? Jacob, did yours dissolve? Okay. Okay. You ate it? All right. It's kind of disgusting. Sid, that taste will go away in a, it, that taste will go away in a couple of weeks. All right. 
<laughs> so when we put the, the cornstarch peanut in our mouth, it dissolves. Is that a chemical change or a physical change? Physical, because we're just dissolving it. When we put the peanut into the acetone, is that a physical change or a chemical change? Chemical. Physical. Physical. It's just changing shape. When we put the peanut in our mouth and chew it up and it comes out squished, physical or chemical? Physical. Physical. All we're doing is changing shape. Okay.